But what were you gonna say? The the people that buy your stuff, like there are people like you said that buy like every single item in, yeah. the, yeah. in the store. Yes. Yeah, like like four hundred five hundred. Yeah, four hundred five hundred dollar carts every time. Damn. Uh, have you guys seen any any being resold on eBay or or StockX? There's like two or three of the limited edition baby blue ones that I've seen on eBay. Um, there's a couple of the regular ones. Some of even the early stuff, the lonely. But that youth. helps. Uh, I'm getting that now. At first, I was getting mad, but now I'm understanding it. That helps because they're setting a price of what they think it's worth. Like you get what I'm saying? Like they're help. They're doing me a favor that because I don't know. Like, well, it doesn't work like that. Well, I, no, I know it doesn't work like that. But like, what I'm saying is like, if we collab, can. if we collab, the price isn't going to be the same as what I would sell a normal hoodie. No, it doesn't not. make sense. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But like. If it's let's just say it's a hundred dollars and they're selling it for one eighty online and someone buys it, what's the problem with me selling the hoodie at one twenty? I just want yeah. StockX to see that happening. Yeah, like you know what I'm saying. Well, that's what he's up. That's, Show us bro, that's, a, that's a phone call away. I can make that happen. No, nah, I want them to like let us like. Let us, you know what I'm saying? Like, we'll sell them some. <laughs> yeah. So you want them to buy from you? Yeah. So they, that's, not, that's not the business nah, model, right? Like that's a. That's but I'm down. Really I don't mind it. It doesn't get me mad unless it's just too much. Unless people are just buying like five hoodies and that's just, all right. You're not gonna do that. So you you wouldn't let people. So if no. I go in there and I want to buy ten hoodies so I, I can mean, resell them, like I, that, it, <laughs> um, like bots and all that. So like this is all part of like the resale market. Yeah, I'm all right with it. Like it's the aftermarket the sort of stuff. I look uh, at it as promo. Uh-huh. Free promo. Just, yeah, that's what I look it's at. Free, it. promo. free promo. Yeah. Whatever. Let me free let, let me ask you this: What are what are the like the the top three things that you and go tell me about each one? What yeah. are the top three tips that you would tell somebody who wants to start a clothing line? Um. So with my experience, the first thing is you want to have you want to nail down the quality of the blank you're using. My very first drop, I used Gildan. Yeah. Fuck Gildan. You why? don't want to be using Gildan. Why? 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 Mean, why? Why? It's thin. Uh, it can rip after you wash. Really? It shrinks. Yeah, I don't. Well, I I'll mean, tell you unless what. It, like the entry blank. Yes. Yeah. If you're talking about like the higher end, like you're getting into like forty, fifty dollars for like the hoodie blanks, then maybe, but not not the, the the entry level stuff. I don't know if it's because of the era that I grew up in or the shit that I bought throughout my life, but Gildan has always been like something that I was super down with. It's not terrible. Yeah. But I'm if not gonna you're, lie. It's like the same thing with Champion. I still wear their black t-shirts. So like, look, Champion. I'm gonna suit. give you an example. Champion, right? In yeah. high school. In 1990, call it 93, 94, 1994 to 1997, I wore it like, I would go to Kmart and buy a $10 hoodie and a ten dollar sweatpants, like big as fuck, yeah. obviously, because that's the style back then. You got to look cholo and shit. So you, I, I wore that, right? And all of a sudden, fast forward twenty years later, and the same sweatpants I would have bought back then at Kmart yeah. are now like fucking forty a pop and fifty a pop for a hoodie. Like it's the same with Supreme. I swear, when I was in middle school, every kid was wearing Supreme, and now Supreme is reselling for three hundred to four hundred dollars for some of their hoodies. Yeah. And that same hoodie I saw back in high school with yeah. three different kids. Yeah, we in, in high school for us it was like the internet didn't exist in high school yeah. for for me. So for us to get Supreme, we heard about Supreme, we heard about uh, Stussy and all that. But like for me, my, my fashion in in 1990, call it 95, 96, 97, the only thing that I wore exclusively was Mecca, uh, PNB, and Triple Five Soul. Yeah, I don't know. Was I born yet on that? No, one? were you born? 19, you were born 97. 1995. You were I wore born 1997. 1997. 97. 99. I yeah, wore uh, Rockaware. Rock yeah, see, Rockaware was out there at the same time. Wu Wear. I wore a lot of Wu Wear, obviously because of Wu Tang. Uh, <laughs> but you know, like Echo, Echo, Echo. Unlimited. I yeah. wore a lot of that because it was like a graffiti thing. I I grew up in Cali though, so it was like Volcom Stone, like DC shoes, yeah, 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 stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah, but you grew up in like 1997, right? Where the internet yeah. was available for you to like online e-commerce hadn't been a thing yet, like it yeah, didn't exist. Yeah, it was growing. Yeah, it was it was it was growing. So for us to be able to get something, like I had to go to Tony Sports in Chicago. So me and my boys, like on payday, would be like, all right, tomorrow we're getting up early and we're hitting it. Bam, we would get we, we would get in a car, we would get in the Intrepid, and then we would the drive who? to Tony Sports <laughs> in, in Chicago. And then we were okay. We see academics, and I see like like everything, like everything I want to get get there right there. Boom! We get a backpack at this, that, and the other. I'm like, oh, I'm flossing, dude. <laughs> I'm so hype. Uh, but for me, obviously, fashion has always been like this 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 major part of self expression. And obviously, being an artist, that to me like means a lot. Uh, but you you never really had any resources to learn how to create your own shit. Um, yeah. 
and I always wanted to have my own line. Obviously, as a graffiti writer, you always you know that's the path that you follow, right? In 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 in, in that in that direction. Uh, but brands back then were more about a representation of what sort of person you. I mean, I guess it is still the the that, yeah. that way, right? Yeah, for sure. Uh, to your point. Volcom Stone was worn by like a lot of surfers, so it would be representative people that went to the beach. DC shoes, Vans were more like skaters. Skateboarders, yeah. yeah. So, so anyway, so tip number one, you uh, tip blanks, num- yeah. Right? Tip number two, um, I would probably well, recap say, on the recap on the blanks and and your your samples. just make sure you're happy with the quality of the blank you're using, and make sure that after multiple washes, wear and tear, it's not going to tear, it's not going to shrink, it's not there's not going to be any. Uh, flaws with the print or quality uh the second tip i would say is don't be afraid to ask for help you don't want to do it alone that's totally fine Uh, my first drop i did with egl which was a company i just reached out to them and they helped me out and you could do the same exact thing anyone could do it Um, i've had many people reach out about merch Um, t hump has reached out about merch Uh, krim used to reach out about merch and it's really easy to get into if you know the people to hit up. You can hit up any company and they will walk you through the entire process, pretty much. 